while I'm talking about illnesses, I thought I would talk about um, autism. I think I brought it up before, but today I'm going to talk about it again. What is Alzheimer's, or not Alzheimer's, um, autism? Look at the kind of behaviors that they have. You know, they, they're definitely obsessive compulsive. You know, they can spin plates all the time. You know, they're definitely in their own world. They rock. You know, they're doing something obsessively. And yet they, they can have unique talents. They can be, um, oh, what's the word for it? Savants in one aspect of their life. So they're highly, highly focused in one specific area where they can receive information and send it out. They can be really, really good at math. They can really see maybe a, a, a time in, in history and know exactly what the weather was. They could be really, really great at computers. Um, they basically will be really good at seeing patterns and patterns within a specific, different, uh, unique aspect of life which means they would be like they excel. And a lot of the elites are basically trying to create, a, a, you know, human life to be autistic. They think that this is a way that um, humanity needs to go because they are like savants. They're, they're the master race because they, they can really have a talent at something that goes beyond the human capability as we see today. So there is a huge, huge driving force with these elites to create autism um, because they, they are perceiving this as a master race, you know, because of this human potential. Um, but we can all have the exact same thing. We just need to know how to tap into it. And basically, um, how autism is created from my observation and watching other people's patterns that ended up creating this. And trust me, if I, I try volunteering to help kids that have autism and it's completely rejected because in order to cure an autistic child, the life and be, beliefs and behaviors of the parents need to change. And they're completely attached to the way they want to behave. They, they, it's like religious people, you can't talk to them. The, the health of their children just isn't as important to give up some of their beliefs and some of their behavior patterns. So they aren't really realizing that a lot of parents are creating the autistic child and the cure for autism, there's no way in hell they'll ever give up what's important to them for the health of their children. But you've got to understand what it is um, and how it, it possibly developed. And it's our need for perfection. It's, it's, uh, it, it appears like some kids are, no matter what they do, there's a parent there that's going to say you're wrong. It's a, a parent that has never been able to see what's right in their child. That, you know, so the child is always constantly looking for parental approval. Um, so that will force the child to be an overachiever to constantly be perfect at everything they do, trying to get the parent to pay attention to something's good about me, please love me, and they'll never ever see it. They'll never ever, the parent will never ever ever see anything good in that child. So that child's aim to be perfect at something to gain parental approval is a losing game, but they'll keep trying. And, um, so they'll end up being, you know, really good workers because they are really highly focused on getting a job done. They're really, really focused on perfection. Um, so, you know, if you want a good worker that will be perfect at, you know, doing the job for you, these are great people. Obsessive compulsive people are really great people to have as a, you know, your worker. Is it healthy? No. Um, you're destroying your planet by doing something like that because these people are never going to find out who they are and it's a pattern that will be repeated somebody that has um, has been diagnosed with an obsessive compulsive disorder then the next generation the ev evolution of that is to have a child that will have autism 
and and you won't be able to communicate with these people at all because of the, there is a definite communication problem that is happening within the evolution of this type of behavior that's going on. Um, not only are they not able to communicate with you, but you can't communicate with them. All communication tends to be blocked out. Uh, you know, when two partners match, one that has an obsessive compulsive disorder and with a partner that, um, you know, only hears what he wants to hear, you know, like if a man is like a couch potato looking at sports and you're in the room trying to get him to pay attention to something and he just doesn't hear it, you know, or if you're trying to make your marriage work and you're trying to communicate and this man always needs to be in his cave and try and figure out how to solve a problem, you know, where a woman wants to solve a problem right away. Um, so it is typically a male behavior trait that I only hear what I want to hear. And if you only want to hear what you want to hear, you've definitely blocked out information being received. And you will definitely create somewhat of a controlling behavior because all you want is to send out information and everybody else better listen to me and they better listen to me within the time frame I want you to, whether it's a long time frame or whether it's your now. Um, but you mix those two behaviors and you'll get an autistic child. And in order to cure that, you have to get rid of your uh, uh, obsessive compulsive behaviors. You have to start seeing the beauty in something. Um, you know, you can't see what's good about an autistic child. So your, your thing is, is how can I find the greatness in this child? How can I love this child for who this child is? And um, then you got to be able to learn how to send and receive information. Autistic kids can definitely communicate. You have to be able to read their body language. You know, they'll be hypersensitive. And you have to learn what they're hypersensitive about. You have to start reading their language. They will talk like babies. You know, like a baby cries and, you know, has a body language that you can tell right away when it's hungry. You can tell when it's not happy. And he's not using any form of language. And that's sort of how you have to communicate with an autistic child, no matter what age. <coughs> <coughs> but if you start to develop um, a communication with the child but by your senses, and sense, what makes that child really, really happy? Then you are developing your ability to send and receive as a parent. And the child will then start to go into your world he will then start to mirror, mirror and image you that if you are teaching the child how to send and receive information by you listening to that child then that child will reflect that behavior and start to be able to to send and receive information from you he will start paying attention to you the parent and start saying what is it you want to teach me what is it that you want of me because the child will always want to please you it is the, the driving force um, but if you want the child to be able to pay attention to you and get into your world, you have to get into the child's world first because he's at a stubborn age. And more than, it all starts by the parent. The parent is the one that's stubborn in the first place and he's just created a new um, evolution of self to make it even more stubborn. So the parent has to stop being so stubborn in order to train the child not to be so stubborn. It's going to be a perfect image of self and the self that is in the environment. Um, these uh, obsessive compulsive people, they need to find the beauty of perfection and imperfection. You know, they, they are people that absolutely cannot see something perfect. Um, but there's perfection and imperfection. You know, like, you look at a flower, a flower is beautiful. But no two flowers are the same. There's a perfection in its uniqueness between, you know, one flower to the next. It's not like one petal has to be exactly the same size, the, the perfect uh, geometric shapes to make it appear perfect. You know, but when you see the whole picture of a flower, you can see, oh my God, it's beautiful, no matter how imperfect it is. And that's how you've got to look at everything, especially something that appears to you negatively. It's something that... Okay, if it doesn't feel good, then look at it and try and examine it and see what is good about it. And when you can train your brain to start seeing the goodness in something that you've never seen the goodness in, then you're reintroducing a different um, um, way of perceiving life. And not only will you cure your ability to not be obsessive-compulsive, not only will you cure 
um, your ability to send and receive information, you'll be teaching this to your child and um, curing them. And they will, the child will still have that superhuman capability of being able to access information like, like a savant. And if you really want to learn how to be a savant yourself, if you want the human race to be able to do that, there is a way. I use this information field. I'm getting access to all of the information that I want that's, you know, totally different than what anybody else believes, but it's like nobody's looking for that information. Nobody wants to see it. Nobody's even looking for it. But what makes the brain actually want to ask those questions and how do you end up getting the answers back? You know, like there's something to that. Um, and there is a way. There is, you know, if you understand autism and what makes uh, a savant, everybody could be a savant if they just wanted to. Um, we happen to think it's impossible. We create what we believe. So if you believe it's impossible, you'll never, ever be able to have this, the talent and skills of a savant. But if you wanted to be one, you can. And the abilities of humanity that are shown out into our world is something that's capable for everybody to be. You just have to want to be it bad enough. Um, some of us, you know, like this guy that's into this um, or organite, you know, and crystals, he's a specialist in that. I have zero interest in wanting to learn that specifically. So I'm going to let him have his uniqueness in that. But I know without a doubt, if I really want to be as good as he is at that, I can push myself into everything it takes to have the same passion as him. But it's a personal choice not to want to go in that direction, but to support somebody that is and, and you know, be able to share and experience what he's perfect at and, and then allow me to, to experience what I'm perfect at because we're all going to be unique and we all need to sort of celebrate our, our own personal gifts. So, and, so it's not a matter of, you know, do you want to be a savant or not and is it a bad thing? If you don't want to be a savant, that's okay. You know, your purpose isn't to be that. You know, but it's still available to you if you wanted to. Peace and love.